Hello and welcome back to another video and in today's video I have something really exciting to show you. I just thought of this before I went to bed so I thought I'd make a video. Uh, but in the last video we made this environment and I wanted to animate this but I didn't really know how to do that without like spending another 4 hours rendering uh, a 10 second animation. So I thought of a way to cheat this and then in my experience in Blender and watching videos about it, I think Ian Hubert already did this with his uh, like Dynamo Dream series, but I have no idea. Uh, I'm just going to do this now and show it to you and just leave it in the comments if this is already done. Yeah, I have no idea. So right here in our scene, what we want to do is we want to have a mist pass. So to do that, we can go over to this view layer and then turn on mist. I already did it because I use it for compositing, but it's off by default, so you can just uh, click this to turn it on. Then you can go over to the world settings. Uh, you won't see this right here, but the rest should be the same. And you should see this mist pass, so open it up. And then go over to rendered mode and then click this little drop down. Uh, render pass set this to mist and then you should be able to see the mist appear you can change the start which is basically where the mist starts so that's the blackest point and then the depth is the length of that and this is the interpolation so if i set this to linear you can see that it's much more foggy or inverse even more but you can just uh, play with this at default it's 50 i think so that would look like this so as you can see, what's close to the camera is black and further away is white. I set this to 250, but we can set this to 50 since we want the, to render this out as a depth map. And for that, we want to utilize uh, the fullest black and the widest white. So I just set it to a low number like 50. I'm going to render it out at 250 because that's how I render the mist. And then I can show you how to be efficient with your mist. So. Yeah, 250 for the mist and let's just hit uh, F12 to render this out and I'll be right back when it's rendered. Alright, it has now finished rendering and it has also applied my composite. So we can go over to the compositing tab. Uh, by default this should be off, so you can just turn it on by clicking this use note. And then you won't see your render, so you can just hit Control, Shift and left mouse button on here to preview your render. I've already added some post processing, but we are not going to use that. What we want to focus on is this mist pass. Of course you want to save your render, but uh, we are going to be using the mist pass, so I can control shift and left mouse button on this uh, node. And then we can see our mist pass in the background. Uh, we want to make it a lot more clear, as I told you, but we can do this uh, efficiently by just using the mist pass we used for our composite. So as you can see, our mist pass is going to the denoiser, then a mix node uh, to mix in the original image and then we can use this mist pass again as a depth map and we can just add in a math node set this to multiply just make sure to clamp this value so you don't get values below zero or above one and then set this value to five what this does is it basically uh, converts the 250 meter depth to 50 meters again by just multiply it by five and as you can see we have a lot of noise that's because of the alpha so we can grab a denoiser by pressing shift d or shift a and just searching for it and you will see it's a lot more smooth and basically we can just save this image so with the multiply uh, previewed we can go over to our viewer node and then go over to the end panel if this isn't here you can press N on your keyboard and it will show up. Go over to this note tab and click save this image and then save it somewhere on your computer. So make sure you have the uh, depth map right here saved and your original render of course. Now there's two ways to make an animation with these. Uh, the first one is using Blender, so I'm going to do that now. And the second one is using DaVinci Resolve, which I think a lot of you already have. Uh, but if not, it's a free software, so you can just download it. Uh, but the first one is in Blender, so in a new scene, I'm just going to save it real quick. And then in the top left, I'm going to go over to File and then Import Images Explained. If this isn't here, you can go over to Edit, then Preferences, 
then add-ons, and then search for import images as planes. And then just uh, enable this. And then it will appear in the import menu here. Now just navigate to your original render. And you will see it imported this image. We can hit Shift A to add in a camera. And then hit Alt G and Alt R on the keyboard to make sure the location and rotation are uh, reset. Then hit G and then Z to limit the movement to the Z axis and move it up by about two. Then what we can do is go over to rendered mode and go over to the render properties uh, or the world properties and make sure the world is black. Um, you can do this in Eevee, doesn't really matter that much. You can go over to the plane and go over to the shader editor and just make this a little bit bigger. And here we have the image. Here's the uh, material for this, but we can't really see it in the pitch black, so we can delete this principal PSCF. And we can either just preview this, or we can add in an emission in the middle. It doesn't really matter, it doesn't do much if you don't export it. Uh, I'll keep the emission there, but it doesn't really do much. And it's just so we can see the image uh, like this. What you can do now is go uh, hit tab to go into edit mode and then add in some loop cuts with Ctrl R. Since this is a 16 by 9 um, image, I'm going to do 15 loop cuts along the horizontal axis and then 8 loop cuts along the vertical axis. And now we have perfect squares. Then I can, can select everything and hit a right mouse button, click subdivide a bunch of times till it's something like this. Go to this modifier panel, add in a displace modifier, click on new, go over to this texture here and click open. And now I'm going to open up the depth map we made. And as you can see, we already have some displacement going on. What we want to do now is hit Ctrl 2 to add in a subdivision surface modifier. If your PC can't handle this much geometry, you can just uh, hit Ctrl 1 for one subdivision level or just uh, not subdivide it this much. Uh, if you want to undo this, you can hit Ctrl E and then unsubdivide and it will undo the subdivisions. Yeah, for me, this is uh, perfectly fine. So I'm going to keep it like this and make sure the strength is set to minus one since we want the shack to be at the top. Now I can hit zero to go into the camera and then just go to the camera data and set the type to orthographic and set the scaling to something like this. Just uh, make sure it's somewhere in the frame. Now we can rotate the camera to get some parallaxing going on. As you can see, we can also make the camera a little bit smaller so we get more movement. And this looks really cool. You can make animations like this. Make sure to keep them really subtle, otherwise the illusion gets ruined a little bit if you're doing this in Blender. In DaVinci you can push this a little bit further, but also not too much. But yeah, overall this looks pretty cool. So if you have this camera shakeify add-on, which I'll put in the description, it's completely free. You can hit plus and then go over to here and just select close-up and then just play it like this. And you get some nice camera shake going on with some parallaxing. If you want to make this more intense, you can just uh, play with the strength. So maybe set this to minus two. So you get more of that illusion. And I'm going to go into the camera data and go to view per display, set the pass per two to one. So where you're fully immersed. And then it will look something like this. You can see some artifacts here, uh, which you can probably fix by uh, changing the depth map a little bit. Of course, you can also just uh, keyframe the camera movements. So go into the timeline over to frame zero and keyframe this orthographic scale so you can zoom in a little bit after like five seconds we can set this to something like this and hit i again and set the end to 120 and now it looks like you're walking up to the house which is really cool might be a little bit too fast and this takes no time at all to render since it's just an image and now I'm going to show you how to do this in DaVinci Resolve. So I'll see you when I'm in that program.
All right, so now we're in DaVinci Resolve, a 3D artist's biggest friend. You can download this for free with the link in the description. So what we can do here is just uh, in this media pool, we can drag in our depth map and also our final render like this. And then go over to this tab and then drag in our uh, image like this. And then go over to the fusion tab so we're going to every single uh, tab in DaVinci Resolve. And with uh, console space, we can search for a displays. Just the normal one works. And we can place this in between these connections by pressing shift and hovering over. And then we can place it in between. And now we are just going to drag in our depth map and then dragging it to the displays. Make sure your connections are green, uh, yellow, Make sure they match mine, basically. And this is already it in DaVinci Resolve. We can just move this uh, thing here. And you will also see the effect. You will see some weird artifacts appear, but you can just fix that by uh, doing the spread to the maximum. And this looks really, really clean. You can also see a lot less of that uh, distortion happening. Maybe here it's uh, a little bit weird if you look at that. But yeah, you can just keep this very subtle and yeah, you have a amazing animation just for free, basically. You have a five second animation instead of four hours for a five second animation. So yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found this very useful and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.